Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rebecca Keppel. In today's video, we are gonna talk all about geometric card designs. If you love creating clean and simple cards, geometric designs really lend themselves to that aesthetic. The other great thing about geometric card designs is that you can really have fun with color. So let's dive into a couple of different ways to achieve this look. First up, there are some companies that really love to create stamps and dies with geometric designs in mind. So let's take a look at some of those. So let's start with a new geometric stamp set from Pink Fresh Studio called Seamless Starburst Circles. I love this new stamp set because you can layer these pie pieces and little lines to create the coolest looking multicolored circles. So I started with the A2 stamp, which has those little lines or starburst kind of looking images and I stamped it in Pink Fresh's Ballerina ink in my Mini Misty. So I'm gonna line up the stamp over an A2 piece of white cardstock. You really can't use the magnet here, so I'm just gonna set that aside, and I'm gonna pick up the stamp and just keep the paper in the corner of the stamp. So like I said, I'm using Ballerina Pink, and I know it's hard to see in camera, but I figured I could use this light pink as guidelines. I'm going to leave the stamp inside my Mini Misty because when I'm done with the other stamps, I'm going to heat emboss this image on top of the colorful stamping that we do. Okay, I did not use all three stamps on every circle the way that you're supposed to. I kind of just went to town filling in around the lines with several different orange and pink inks. I'll list all the colors that I use down below. There is an image on the back of the stamp packaging that you could follow, but I wanted this done as quickly as possible, so I just had fun adding pie pieces and color to each of the circles. And I wasn't as concerned as filling all of them in per se. I just kind of wanted to play with color and shapes on this background here. Once all the colorful stamping was done, I put the panel back inside my mini Misty and treated the entire panel with anti-static powder and swept away the excess with my Tonic Studios brush. Then I inked up the large stamp with Versamark ink. I was sure to really ink the stamp up well because I had a feeling I needed to get this all done in one shot or risk getting a shifted image. Once I had stamped it in Versamark ink, I poured Imagine Crafts Emboss Sparkling Champagne Embossing Powder on top. And then I used my heat tool to melt the embossing powder. And I love how you can see the embossing powder change when it melts. It turns glittery and shiny. It's just such a pretty, unique color. And I love the combinations of pink and orange, even if I didn't perfectly line up all those pie pieces, it still has a fun geometric look to it. I trimmed the panel down to four by five and a quarter and I used Tape Runner to adhere it to some Sorbet A2 cardstock from Concord and Ninth, which I'm going to talk more about in the next card. I placed all of that back in the Mini Misty, this time to stamp the sentiments. I love the small typeface sentiments in this stamp set, and I decided to use three in an inverted C shape on the right side of the card. So it kind of moves the eye around along those circles and the sentiments. I stamped each one in a different color of Pink Fresh Studio ink. And I love having these four cube sets that they have because you can then get four tones of a color and they all work really well together. Now let's move on to geometric dies. Lots of companies have small and affordable die sets featuring geometric shapes that can be used to create backgrounds or even focal images. I'm using this My Favorite Things Trendy Triangles die set. I love having multiples of the same size so I can easily cut out a bunch of triangles at once to complete my design. Today, I'm using Concord and Ninth cardstock from an assortment pack that I bought and I've cut down to A2 panels there. 
I thought all of these colors were pretty and I wasn't sure what color combo I wanted to use on this card. So I'm just going to cut out a bunch of triangles and store whatever I don't use today in my die pocket for future projects. I did end up using several colors of pink and blue and then a couple of the greens as well. I decided to create a design at the top and bottom of a horizontal A2 card and leave the center open for my sentiment. There are so many different patterns you could create with these triangles from creating multicolor squares out of them or creating pinwheel image shapes. Half the fun is making something new from these geometric die cuts. I decided on layering two smaller triangles over a larger triangle to create kind of like an arrow look. For my sentiment, I'm going to be stamping with Distress Oxide Chipped Sapphire Ink on white cardstock, and I'm using the Waffle Flower Happy Birthday Sentiments in my Mini Misty. And thank goodness I used the Mini Misty because my ink pad was so dry that I needed to stamp it many, many times to get a good impression. Looks like this one needs to be refilled. Once I got the sentiment stamped, I used the matching die held in place with purple tape and ran it through my die cut machine. I love that this mixed font sentiment has the awesome matching die because then you can pop it up on dimensional adhesive. Once I adhered the happy birthday in between the rows of triangles, I was not happy with the open spaces on either sides. So I layered a couple of extra triangles on both sides and used some Gina K for Thermoweb dot roller adhesive, which really gives you some time to move those die cuts around before the adhesive fully adheres. Of course, stamps and dies are not the only way to create geometric looks. You can also use stencils. There are tons of geometric stencils on the market featuring squares, triangles, lines, and more, and I've used a bunch of them in previous videos. But recently, I grabbed this My Favorite Things Wonky Dots stencil. With it, I'm going to use Distress Oxide Abandoned Coral ink and a foam ink blender. I'll also be using Thermoweb's Pixie Spray to hold the stencil in place, and I'm working on my Waffle Flower Water Media Mat because it's a great surface for ink blending. So first, I lightly spray the back of the stencil with Pixie Spray. While the pixie spray on the stencil is drying, I placed a piece of Concord and Ninth's grapefruit cardstock down onto my mat on the overspray and smooth it out to keep it in place. Once the pixie spray is dry on the stencil, it may still be tacky to touch but should not be wet. I place it down on top of the cardstock and again apply pressure to make sure it's temporarily adhered and stays in place. I want to ink blend an ombre background, so here I'm using very little pressure at the top of the stencil and increasing it as I move down the stencil with the most pressure and ink at the bottom. When I peel off the stencil, you can see the dots at the top are lighter than the dots at the bottom, and I love the tone-on-tone -tone look of the coral ink on the grapefruit cardstock. But we're not gonna stop there. I'm going to be using some Gina K for Thermoweb Glitz Glitter Gel in Iridescent. I use a Tonic Studio spatula to scoop some of the glitz out and apply it to the flat end of the Thermoweb Stencil Pal and then swipe from top to bottom, covering the stencil with glitz. The Stencil Pal's width allows you to completely cover the entire A2 card panel in just a few swipes and creates even coverage. Peel back the stencil and be sure to wash it off right away so that the glitz doesn't dry on it and ruin it. To get the panel up without ruining the edge, I'm using a metal palette spatula to lift up that tiny corner. You can still see the ombre effect, but it will be even more evident once the glitz dries. While the panel is drying, I'm going to work on a sentiment. I'm using the A2 Lacy Layers dies from Waffle Flower to cut out a scalloped rectangle, and I love the little pierced details the scallops have too. Once that is cut out, I placed a Sending You Hugs die from My Favorite Things on top and held it in place with purple tape so I could run it through my die cut machine. I'm using Thermoweb's Ultra Bond Liquid Glue on the back of the die cut panel since some of the pieces are tiny and I wanted to make sure that nothing gets pulled up. I placed it down on a scrap of white cardstock and then just lift up the edge so I could use some nonstick scissors tucked just underneath to cut away the excess. 
I love the white behind the coral and did decide to adhere the little pieces of the D and the O to complete the look. Next, I placed a few foam squares behind that sentiment rectangle and popped it up on top of the glitz ombre panel. Then I put the tape runner on the center of an A2 slightly darker color of cardstock so that I could adhere the panel down and have a darker edge around the whole card. Layering the iridescent glitz over ombre inked backgrounds to create that geometric look was so much fun and I'm thinking about different ways to use this fun technique. If you're more of an embossing folder card maker, well you're in luck. They have those for geometric designs as well. Like stencils, there are a ton of geometric embossing folders out there that can help create clean and simple yet bold cards. Today, I'm using the Pink and Mains Wide Stripe 6x6 embossing folder. I love the 6x6 size because you can get a consistent pattern on an A2 card panel. I'm using 110 pound cardstock here so I can do a direct to paper inking once the panel is embossed. I drag the Distress Oxide Chipped Sapphire ink pad from one side to the other, moving in the direction of the embossed lines. Then I flip the panel so I can go from the other side so that both edges are dark. I love the way that it looks almost like an aged wood painted fence. For the sentiment, I'm using the Good Vibes Only stamp from My Favorite Things, and I stamped it in Versamark ink on some Concord and Ninth Midnight cardstock, and I used some white embossing powder, which really pops on the dark blue. I lost a bit of video footage here, but I didn't do anything crazy. I just cut down the embossed panel, layered it over some Concord and Ninth Ballet Slipper cardstock, and then cut down the sentiment to a rectangle and popped it up on top. Super, super simple, but a fun, bold look. But what if you don't have any of these products on hand and you want to create a geometric card right now? Well, then you're in luck. Take a look at your stash. If you have nesting dies in geometric shapes, they can be used to create these cards as well. For this card, I'm going to use nesting dies to create a geometric, almost abstract art-like background. This is a super quick and easy way to create a bold geometric card using nesting dies that you might already just have in your stash. I'm using Waffle Flowers nesting squares and Waffle Flowers additional squares. If you get both of these sets, you have squares that are 1 16th of an inch difference in size. For this card, I used an assortment of Gina K cardstocks because I knew exactly which colors I wanted to use as I'm actually recreating this card from one that I made a long time ago. Just like with the triangles, I'm creating the card with die cuts on the top and bottom and leaving that center open for the sentiment. For the sentiment, I'm using the Waffle Flower Happy Retirement stamp set. I loved their mixed font sentiments like this, and I really love that they have dies that cut them out. I'm going to stamp this sentiment in Gina K Black Obsidian Amalgam Ink on white cardstock. I used the Mini Misty to double stamp to get that really crisp black impression. And then I temporarily adhere the matching die with purple tape to cut it out. I cut super thin strips of foam tape with nonstick scissors to be able to hide it behind the sentiment and pop it up in the middle of the card. Next, I adhere the two large squares in the upper right and lower left corners of the card. You can see that I created the same margin around both to be consistent. Then I again use tape runner to adhere the medium sized squares. For these, I centered them in the open spaces in the upper left and lower right. Even though they're different sizes and can't have the same margins around them, this centering will make this background look purposeful and not just messy. For the last three squares, I'm using foam adhesive to add dimension and each of these will touch another square. The placement of these smaller squares helps move the eye around the card. I really love this clean and simple card. The colors and then the black and white sentiment all have such a bold impact. Plus it's so easy to create with different colors or sentiments and can be used 
for any recipient as well. Do you love playing around with geometric shapes to create cards? Let me know down in the comments below. If you do wanna check out any of the supplies that I used today to create my cards, they will all be linked down in the YouTube description box below. If you love seeing card making techniques and product reviews, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified every time I have a new video available. As always, I wanna thank you so much for spending time with me today. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you again soon. I'm just banging my thigh like for emphasis, but that doesn't sound good in audio. So <laughs> let's do it one more time. <laughs> like, <laughs> did you see my eye going everywhere? I just realized I wasn't sure if it was recording. <laughs> so I'm like.